this Friday. I know it doesn't count in the record, but playing in front of people and right. getting this thing going, what's that going to be like? Uh, it's just fun. Just It's fun for the whole city of Nebraska, and it's fun for us just because of last year, you know, not being able to have fans due to COVID and actually not even be able to have this open tonight due to COVID. So um, just being able to play in front of our fans and just – you know, you saw our fans that, like, the season's here and we're ready. There's some big recruits coming in. How big is it, you know, to have success currently, but also, you know, get the next guys excited, maybe get some guys excited to come here? Um, that means, I mean, just on the recruiting side of it, just it means we're starting a culture. We're starting something big. So for us to um, have really good recruits coming in and want to be here, that means that we're doing something here currently at Nebraska. We're doing something good. You know, we're, we're doing something that's wanting to bring people here. So um, I feel like we're doing a good job in just shifting our culture of Nebraska. How big a deal is peer recruiting and hoops? Like if Coach Weber was kind of standing up there, like, you know, Trey was able to tell Bryce, like, I like the culture here, and then maybe Bryce told one of those guys. Is, is, that, is there kind of a chain reaction? Yeah, it is a chain reaction because um, in this basketball world, when you've got guys like Trey and Bryce, um, that who's pretty popular, you know, um, they might know other kids who might be in, looking into Nebraska or um, just in general, they, someone who's another four star might see Nebraska being chosen as a, as a top pick. So it just, it just allows Nebraska to be an option for other people and uh, other kids. You've got sort of a, a mix of body types in the in the front court. Mm -hmm. I guess what do you, what do you make of that group so far? And what does Wilhelm? Obviously, he's really young. What has he yeah. added to that that mix so far? Um, just our bigs alone, man. We we all kind of have something different that we can bring to the table, um, especially just with our height and length and um, just the versatility between everyone. Um, but Wilhelm alone, especially, he he's a he's a great learner. He's really smart. He he catches onto the game really quick, um, and he can score the ball. You know, he's true 6'10", 6'11", score the ball, he can put it on the ground, um, he can rebound, and he talks and he plays hard. So you, you kind of want to have a guy of his statue. You've been around Power 5 basketball a long time. How much has that added weight and strength and help Eduardo as he goes forward in his career? A lot, you know. Um, the Big Ten got some big dudes, so um, for Ed, it's just about you know, he was a freshman last year, so it's just about continuing to just grow and get better each and every year. Alonzo mentioned last week he felt like he had something kind of going with you chemistry-wise mm -hmm. out there. Who sensed that, and what yeah. has he brought? Um, yeah, he just brings a lot of more playmaking, you know. He brings um, just another good guard to the table who understands the game, who understands when to make the right play and how to make the right pass. You know, um, just like me and Delano had a little two-man connection, uh, me and Zoe have that same two-man connection, so um, pick and roll is our thing. You know? uh, when you got a guard that's really good pick and roll, and a big like myself that can perform out of the, the role, um, you really have to sometimes have like a Kobe and Shaq combination. Yeah. <laughs> I think you said he's pretty slippery to guard a lot of that. Is. Mm -hmm. is he? I mean, he's pretty good at just getting yeah. Up, yeah, getting he's, into the he's, paint. Yeah, he's super shifty, um, small, but he's quick and shifty. You know. Um, for any guards who are quick and shifty, that's always a problem. You know, especially when you come in off of one of Derek Walker's strings. <laughs> <laughs> How is he at throwing those lobs, Jay? Uh We actually haven't been throwing that much lobs. We need to work on that. Um, Bryce probably caught our most lobs so far. <laughs> I'm getting old. Oh, my knees don't work the same anymore. Do they call you uh, Grandpa D. Walker? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm Onk, Grandpa, old man. Uh, all of the above. Yeah, I'm the oldest on the team. <laughs> what do you guys need to do to improve your uh, efficiency out there? Um, dunk it. <laughs> I think that's probably the only thing that, that helps your efficiency. But, um, I mean, you know, just working on it, um, just actually taking the right layup and not trying to force one when there's two or three people down there. So just making the right play and just knowing what you got at the rim instead of just sometimes throwing the ball up there. Do you feel the difference? And we're talking about how you guys are you know, shooting has improved so much. Do you feel that difference in front of you <coughs> that space? Well, yeah, we do got a bunch of shooters. I mean, you got KJ, CJ, Black, Cole. I mean, 
the Wilhelm, and uh, I'm, I'm missing so many people, but, um, you know, when you, when you got everyone that can shoot the ball, it's just, it's amazing, because it just, what's in your mind, it's just like, who, you're, who are you going to guard, you know, and if we got three, four guys hitting, you know, that's a nightmare for another team, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to see how these guys shoot the ball, especially when we get to play against competition. I know they like to play through you with the elbow. Who's, who's the best off-ball cutter on the team? Uh, I think CJ is, CJ might be our best right now. Okay. You know, just um, just knowing when and timing. Um, but that's something all these guys are trying to learn and get better at. But I think CJ might have caught on to it. The why, why him? What, what stands out his ability? Oh, I forgot about Lat, but Lat, 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 Lat's been there. But uh, are you asking about CJ or CJ? Lat? Well, I mean, it is interesting well, that you say Lat though, because you don't think it's the big guy is the guy who's gonna. You know, I forget go back about Lat just because I play with him um, already, and I can know what he, I know what he's gonna bring. I know that I always, I'm always gonna have him on there, so uh, I'll just kind of think of more of just the new guys. But um, CJ, he, he can do everything. He used to play a big spot, you know, so sometimes he would cut, get the ball, pump fade, you know, get a bucket. He's got so, some posts, Yeah, he, okay. he's smooth down there, okay. so he, he's really versatile and just being able to just put him in different spots because he can shoot the ball, put him on the ground, get to the room, and also um, get your bucket out of the post. So um, that he, he's going to be real special for us. Have you tried to tell the guys what it's like just to see PBA full of, full of fans? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I'm still excited because I didn't get to play, you know, so I, I was still a fan when I was even in the um, gymnasium, so I, I kind of can't even tell them what it's going to be like, you know, just because I just had to sit through it, so I'm excited. You guys going to play some G Herbo for Fred to get him ready? Yeah, you gotta get, you gotta get her, uh, Hoy Berg jumping up and down, get him ready. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.